All right, guys. So welcome back to another episode of Everything Business. Um, today, I will be looking at the 2017 paper, right? If you look at the topics that were given out for this year's accounts exam, right? You will see that corporative accounting is one of the topics. And so today, I'll be looking at a corporative accounting question from 2017, it should give you uh, an idea of what to expect from corporative, um, from a corporative accounting question. She said question. All right. So um, this question has two parts. Well, it has more than two parts, but the corporative, the part that tests corporative um, accounting is question, I mean, section A and section b right our section a has two parts rather right and so that is what we'll be looking at it values nine marks the entire question on cooperative values nine marks so we'll be looking at it um all right and you know hopefully i will get the time to upload more um questions on cooperative accounting all right now, before we start, you you need to understand or you need to know what a cooperative accounting is. Sorry, what a cooperative type of business is, right? Now, a cooperative type of business is a business that is formed with the sole purpose of benefiting um, their members, whether um, financially um, or, well, yeah, financially, right? So it's, it, look, it seeks to benefit members, right? And that is very important. There may be times in, when the cooperative may put on, um, you know, whatever they do, they may make a profit from it and then the profit must be shared. So we will have a, an appropriation account attached to the cooperative account. The cooperative account, um, the cooperative type of business, they use um, income statement. They also, not income statement, sorry, income and expenditure account. And you will remember income and expenditure account um, from the account of non-profit organization. Receipts and payments, yeah, right? They also use um, cash flow statements. Um, you won't be tested on the cash flow statements part. Um, and they also use statement of financial position or the balance sheet, right? So you may be tested on the balance sheet as well, right? So they use income and expenditure, cash flow, balance sheet you won't be tested on the, the cash flow but you 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 may be tested on the income and expenditure um and the balance sheet right i have also seen questions where they ask they asked you to use journal entries to record um when when, when shares are sold right how you'd record that right so to use journal entries to show how um you record when shares are sold, right? Because with the cooperative company, they do, cooperative type of business rather, they do sell shares to members. And so you need to know how to record that. I'll pick that up in another video, right? When I'm doing another question, right? So, but this question, right? Let's look at this question, all right? Please remember to hit that like button, right? Just to leave a comment, just to, you know, an encouraging word if you like what I'm doing, right? All right, so let's get right into it. So it says, and if you realize this is question five, so you know that this is the last question, right? They normally put these questions at the back of the paper. So it says, the treasurer of Storecraft Cooperative presents the following information for the year ending the 31st of March, 2016. Now we are given information about gross profit here, honoraria, to members now honoraria is is a, is a word it's basically an, an appreciation money that you give to somebody right so somebody um do something for you but they didn't charge but you know you want to just appreciate them in a financial way that is honoraria right so they are paying honoraria to members right um obviously for tasks that the members would have done for the cooperative right but they did not charge so they're just giving them a a, a a love gift if you will 
or you know a contribution or appreciation fee if you, if you want to call it that and then you have bank fees right um fees paid for training members then you have interest from investments right sometimes cooperative societies um may do that they may invest in other business ventures right and you know just as a way of earning some money just the same right and then you have retained profits from last year so they ask us to use the following information to prepare um their income and expenditure account right so obviously you know you're going to start with the heading storecraft cooperative income and expenditure account for the year um the year end the 31st of march 2016. so you put your income right the gross profit which is forty thousand, right that is pretty straightforward gross profit would be an income right then you have the interest from investments which is six thousand nine hundred and ten right that would also be an investment right you may be tempted right um to put retained profits here as an income but it is not a, it's not to be placed there retained profits should be placed in the appropriation account all right so just bear that in mind so we move on to the so our total income is forty six thousand nine hundred and ten then we move on to the expenditure section right bank fees is an obvious expenditure training fees is, is another obvious expenditure and i know again that you may be tempted to put the honoraria to members right because it's money you know you're paying out right um whilst it is an expenditure yes but um it should be placed in the appropriation account and not in the income and expenditure account all right so we have the two expenditure figures which total 3900 that we are going to subtract from our income which leaves us with forty three thousand and ten dollars yeah and and that's basically the income and expenditure account but mark you know, guys you know you will know that it's not anything big you're expected to do by the marks so look at the marks it's just four marks so you know that you don't you're not expected to move um earth for four marks all right so let's look at the other side of the question now. so it says the treasurer of storecraft cooperative knows that um, the Cooperative Act requires that 25% of profits must be transferred to a reserve funds account. And this is a standard thing, right? Um, in, 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 in some textbook, they will have 20% um, for the corporate, what the Cooperative Act requires. I know that Jamaica's own was under review, so maybe it's, it's changed now to 25%, right? So the cooperative act um, requires that 25% of the profit. And when it says the profit, it is the profit before adjustments, right? This same profit that we just got for the 3010, all right? And the cooperative by, cooperatives by law. So the bylaw, these are the policies that are formulated by the members, right? So if you don't understand what a bylaw is, it's really policies that are formed by the members. It requires that 20% of the profits after such transfer, what transfer are they talking about? After this transfer, you call it a statutory transfer or a statutory reserve, right? So it says after you do that, right, then 20% of what is left must be shown as retained profits. And then all other profits are paid out to members as dividends. And if you, if you are familiar with the jargon surrounding company accounts or accounting relating to limited liability companies then you would know what a dividend is a, it's a payout on your um um on, on your investment right so it's a based on the requirements about prepare storecrafts cooperative um income appropriation account right for the end of the year right i didn't write i didn't bother to write the heading there um because you know it's just five marks and so right so we start with our surplus right and then the information that you need for the heading is right there right we start with the surplus which is what we just calculated for for the 2010 um then based on the format of the appropriation account for the cooperative we are going to add our retained profit which is 12,500 12,500 cedar all right all right so we get 55 1510 then we're gonna transfer our reserves now 
for persons who are familiar with company accounts. If you are familiar with company accounts and accounting of nonprofit organization, the company and cooperative accounts would be easy for you, right? At the end of this video, I'm, going to, I'm just going to put up the slides for receipts and payments, um, account or accounting for nonprofit organization, um, so that you can just you can just go through. All right. I don't think I've done a video on company accounts yet, but it's coming up soon. And then, so the statutory reserve, so it's 25% of 43,010, which is $10,753, which leaves us with 44,757, right? Then now, this is where we subtract our honoraria. So we list honoraria, which is 5,500, right? You would have put in your retained profits, which is 8,951. How did I get this 8,951, right? So if you look here closely, right here, it's 20% of the 44, of this figure, it's 20% of the 44,757. Because remember that the question says, after you do the statutory deduction, right? After you do that, you need to calculate 20%, right, of what is left, and that should be your retained profit. So you calculate 20% of the 44,757, you get 8,951. So, so far we would have known, right? The honoraria, which is 5,500, and we would have known the retained profits. This figure here would not be there, right? So this figure, nothing would be right here. So here would be blank, right? Then you ask yourself, how do I know what the figure is to be here? right you know that it this plus this right plus whatever figure is right should be right here would give you the 44757 so all you need to do to find out what this figure should have been or would be is you add the 5500 or 5500 plus the 8951 right and then you subtract it from the 44757 you would get this now which is 30,306, which is for the proposed dividend, because the question did say all other profits are paid out to members as dividends, right? And, and that's it, you get five marks, right? This question was not a difficult question, but as I said, if you are not familiar with cooperative accounts, you may find this question difficult, right? But if you are familiar with receipts and payment, company accounts, and cooperative accounting, then this question is easily a, a 5 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, right? All right, let's say 6, right? Um, um, I'm going to stick with 5, 5, right? 5 out of 10. All right, guys, remember to hit that like button, right? Leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, right? Whatever the comment may, may be, just leave something, same? And I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.